If you stick around, we'll tell you how our suspect was able to execute the Idaho murders. The four University of Idaho students, Ethan Chapin, 20, Zana Carnotal, 20, Madison Mogan, 21, and Kaylee Gonsalves, 21, were stabbed to death, likely while sleeping on November 13th between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. in Moscow, Idaho, home on King Road near the college campus, according to police. Investigators on the case will be looking at everyone associated with each victim, starting with their families and inner circles, said Jennifer Coffendaffer, a former FBI agent. Because it hasn't been solved yet, I believe they're past the inner circles of these individuals. Perhaps it's more of a very outlying individual. Last video, we said police would start with the victim's inner circle and work out. Well, it's time to start realizing that this might not have been a hurt college student filled with revenge, but an actual predator that preyed on and picked these victims out that was more of an outlying individual. Coffendaffer said one theory is that the killer is someone that may have built up anger against one or more of the slain students, which we are leaning away from as each day passes. What would the anger be from? What's the motive? We already heard from the taxi driver that the girls were happy and had no worry in the world when he dropped them off an hour before the crimes occurred. But another theory that Coffendaffer is leaning towards is that the killer is someone with perverted thoughts and anger towards women in general who took the opportunity to strike on the night of the murders. They're known as insuls, who has watched this house, who is seeing all of these beautiful girls go in and out and their rage and their own personal horrific desires they realized that night. Somebody still in that area, somebody that has seen these beautiful girls because only girls live there, right? An individual with absolutely horrible, murderous desires against these women, a femicide type case, and it came to a boiling point combined with an opportunity. Femicide is defined as the intentional murder of women because they are women. There are two categories of femicide intimate and non-intimate the former relates to the killing of women by current or former partners while the latter involves the killing of women by people with whom they did not share an intimate relationship with this could be very much the case but as we peel this case back one thing we don't know is did they find any odd dna or dna that didn't fit in with the consistency of dna found in the house we're sure they have already taken DNA samples voluntarily from people that were known to be in the house whose DNA was floating around just to eliminate them. What we're curious of is in key areas of the crime scene, like where the victims were laying or door handles into their rooms, whose DNA besides the victims were found around there. Now what's tough is, we know the crime scene was contaminated because the morning after the crimes were committed, roommates and friends of the roommates who called 911 were in the house hours before police were, touching things, walking in the house, touching door handles into the victim's room to check if they were okay. The suspects may have been someone who attended a party at the house or knew the victims very loosely, former FBI agent Jennifer Coffendaffer said. In other words, the people there might not have known our suspect other than they were around at the peripherals, but somebody who would have gone unnoticed, she said. So, you have the perfect storm that night, and this person familiar with the house, familiar with when they came and left, and familiar with that area, to be able to leave quickly, familiar with the tree line of where they could have surveyed the house and seen the lights go on and off, and so on and so forth. That could be why police have stated that they believe the crimes were targeted but not concluded if the house or its occupants were the target, she said. There have been many cases like this one in Idaho and it's not anybody in the victim's inner circle but rather it's somebody outside the circle that has issues in and of themselves that they've acted out on. There was only one person who saw our victims last before these horrific homicides called the Idaho murders happened. Click this video to hear their testimony.